Good afternoon. I'm Mark Allen with Gabriel.io, and I'm here today with David Gonzalez, a senior manager at Kangaroo Time. Good afternoon, David. How are you doing? I'm great, Mike. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, I know you're in Buffalo now. How's the weather back there? Uh, I think snow is on the horizon, so uh, uh, it's uh, it's turning on us. Not for the good. <laughs> so, so some people that have watched my podcast know I'm from there, so I do remember uh, Halloween not being canceled one year, but it snowed really. We got like a foot of snow on Halloween. <laughs> tomorrow, right? So I know it's right around that time it starts, right? Yep, 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 yep. Um, yeah, I, I think we're more focused on the big game on Sunday. <laughs> As am I. I'm looking forward to it. So, so let's start talking about work now. So, so to start with, can you share a brief background of yourself and your work experience? Yeah, sure. Uh, I you know spent four years at HSBC where I was a product manager in the, on the digital banking team. Uh, we specifically focused on conversational banking tools pretty much in an effort to help transform the uh, contact center away from a voice-based uh, a voice based or over the phone based uh, service to the non-voice channels. Uh, so, you know, by the end of it, our team launched a uh, live chat, asynchronous messaging, our chatbot ADA, um, and was able to migrate about 35% of contacts away from voice to the lower cost, more efficient and, uh, and better customer experience channels uh, with live chat and messaging. Then we were also able to successfully uh, automate about 15% of those contacts. Um, so giving back customers back time and effort, you know, so th that was pretty cool. Um, kind of moved on from there to work at uh, M&T Bank where I was vice president of innovation. Uh, spent about a year there uh, forging FinTech partnerships and identifying acquisition opportunities. Um, really cool job kind of give me the opportunity to analyze our business model and how we might uh you know evolve it over time uh so that we're able to you know support organic growth and um, become a lot more efficient in our ability to service our customers and then uh after kind of uh, spending a lot of time with fintech and startups uh, kind of caught the bug and i uh, wanted to get on the other side of it um so i uh, took a leap over to a company called kangaroo time uh, in a fintech product manager role, um, and, and that's kind of what I'm doing now. So uh, right now, I lead a team uh, that uh, is working specifically on two things. One is uh, continuing to optimize our tooling in the fintech space, so um, billing and invoicing, pay payments, as well as uh, the subsidy side, which you can talk about a little bit more in detail. There's a lot of interesting stuff that we're doing over there. And then the other side is analytics. So reducing the time to insight for our customers so that uh, we're taking all of that rich data, giving it back to them so that they can make uh, more efficient decisions about their business. Very interesting. And interesting fact, I started my first full-time job was at M&T Bank. And then I switched to which what is now HSBC at the time it was Marine Midland. And we, so we've worked, in this, we've walked the same halls. <laughs> were you at M &T uh, out in Waysville? Was that the office you were at? No, I was uh, downtown in the plaza. So oh. um, there's two big towers. Yeah. I was in the in the, one of the big ones. Yeah. yeah I, do they still have um, Thursdays in the afternoon? Thursday afternoons have concerts at the at the plaza. Yep. Yep. Those were fun. I actually saw Grover Washington. <laughs> there. That was a great one. Yeah, it's a good time. It's it's the better part of Buffalo. It's the uh, it is the uh, the best kept secret in the summer. Yes, it is. <laughs> so. So what has been your experience with remote employment, uh, both as an employee, which you've done, and now as an employer? Yeah, um, interesting. So we have moved on from uh, when COVID hit, um, we transitioned to 100% remote. Um, it was interesting. I think for uh, from the perspective of uh, a company that was about 30 people, um, I think it al allowed us to uh, implement some processes that um, maybe that weren't in place before, um, because we, we were kind of going through the stage from growing from a very small team of about 10 to a team of 30. Um, so a lot of times, you know, you just kind of pick up work and, and everyone's just collaborating in the same room. Um, what what uh, remote work forced us to do is actually start to set up meetings um, and allow focus, uh, allow 
folks to kind of drive things from their own different areas that they were starting to kind of build out. So it kind of actually worked to our benefit to a certain extent for us to be able to accelerate our adoption of new processes. Um, my experience at HSBC, you know, we were we had a flexible work environment for uh, quite some time. So um, we used to use a work from home day for for more purposes of like focusing. Um, so I used to work at least two days a week at from home. Um, that would be more of like my planning or work that I had to be head down on. Um, and it kind of minimized the interruptions while going into work when I needed to collaborate with others. So um, I, I think uh, the interesting thing that no one was really talking about or the interesting thing that that um, impacted us specifically as a startup at our stage was that it allowed us to, to accelerate our ability to implement processes, which, which is something that I think is unique to us. <laughs> Yeah, and one, and it's interesting. I think a lot of companies, if, if if they looked at it as an opportunity, it really has helped them, right? As a company, and yep. there, there was a, there was the pain at first, but you know, if you say, "Hey, how are we going to make this work?" It really did help you. Um, just button everything down is kind of the way to say it, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. And uh, and, and there's a lot more seamless than a lot of us stuff. Yeah. So now that you've been doing it for about seven months, what do you think is the future of remote? Uh, employment and what do you think can be done differently to make it more effective? Two things, a uh, hybrid model. Um, so I think um, what we found is uh, within our leadership team, um, we were getting a lot of feedback that uh, some of like, especially like folks in the sales team or more of our extroverted uh, colleagues were really yearning for that social interaction. That was one. Um, two, uh, we were missing a bit of the we call it the magic that uh, that's created in a lot of our ideation sessions. We're all in the same room, uh, kind of mulling through some of the problems or opportunities that we're discovering. We felt like we lost a bit of that. Um, so we do think that uh, getting everyone in the same place does have value. Um, at the same time, um, I think so. I, I think a hybrid model would make a lot more sense because there's also the um, if you think of it from the perspective of of cost. Um, I don't think we necessarily need to invest in an in office space and historically in the way that we have, whether it's owning the real estate or actually renting. Um, I, I think we can move to a model where we can, you know, license or have more of a shared workspace. Um, that way we kind of lower our costs, but then have somewhere where we can all go and collaborate when we need to. Yeah, very cool. So what is the... Um... What is uh, the story behind Tangerine Time? It's an interesting name. And so do you know how they came up with it? And, and tell us what you do. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and tell, tell us what Kangaroo Time does. Yep. Uh, so the name and Scott Wayman, our CEO, can, can tell us a lot better. But um, he he just was transitioning from his first startup, uh, MedStreaming. It was a, 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 a kind of like a, a ERM company in the medical space um anyways he he witnessed or was in a uh a baby delivery room and um i can't remember it was one of his family members or something and the infant was given to the child and um or sorry the infant was given to the father and the father took off his shirt and um and he asked like why are you doing that and um, it was it, there's some sort of health benefits with uh, bonding with the child by having the skin to skin contact. That's called kangaroo time. <laughs> so he kind of came up with it and said, that's going to be the name, name of the next startup. <laughs> um, and uh, that's kind of the history of the name, uh, because at the same time, he was uh, he was actually took a took a job in the um, in, as a child care director so he can learn the space. Um, what he did, he was uh, at the time fostering his little brother um, and he kind of was like, he identified that there's a lot of inefficiencies in the child care space. Mm -hmm. um, so he's like, you know what, I'm going to solve some of these problems that I was identifying. Um, I'd say two or three of them. One of them was um, a lot of, they had a lot of manual and analog processes, pretty much disruption, digital disruption has hit the industry that hired quite yet. So they were using pretty much paper for everything. Um, two, he had system with billing. He had uh, um, a he had uh, background experience in billing automation, and implementing those systems, and he identified that uh, that hasn't quite made it to the childcare industry. Um, and three, he identified that the communication uh, between the staff members and the parents and the families was broken. Um, so he kind of was like, okay, I'm going to solve these three things. Uh, build that into a value proposition and that's going to be my first company um so took that uh hit the market 
and uh, started, uh, geez, I th- we're up to a, just about a thousand customers in about five years. So uh, we rolled pretty fast and now we're starting to kind of look up market. So um, we started kind of like in the SMB space. Um, now we're in the process of building and launching our next generation, uh, our next generation platform called K. Internally, we're calling it K2, and um, it's more targeted at uh, at the enterprise client. So servicing some of their needs, like um, like being able to have a multi uh, a multi center tenant, so that you're able to see um, the, uh, the performance of your business across the entire enterprise or across the entire center, or instead of an individual center. And um, giving them more capabilities to uh, um, to aggregate up data and then do analysis at the fifty five thousand foot level. So um, amongst a lot of other things that that we have going on. Oh, very cool. So it, it was funny because I, when I saw the name, I was wondering if it was after you know Captain Kangaroo, which was which really was childcare when I was a kid, and then <laughs> that was before Mister Rogers and Barney. <laughs> <laughs> One other funny thing is that uh, is uh, we actually just entered the Australian market uh, this year, so um, so it, it's like a, a natural transition to to bring that name to the to that market. <laughs> well, so you are, so you are growing. Um, that's good, and and I'm assuming you're you're a SaaS based business for um, it's B two B. Yeah, we're B two B, so we provide. Uh, you know, our, our business model uh, consists of two revenue streams. Um, one is a, a recurring subscription fees. Um, so we have a, a recurring SaaS fee model, and then the other one is payments. So um, core to the business model is the ability to, to for us to be able to take interchange on the tuition payments that are facilitated uh, via our platform. Um, the other part of that that we just are starting to, to launch is the payroll side. Um, so we're taking interchange on the disbursement of, uh, of paychecks or, or uh, uh, pay uh, cool. from the child care center to the employees themselves. Cool, so and um, are all of your employees in Buffalo or are they throughout you know, the country or possibly Ooh. the world? We're multinational now. Um, so we have uh, the, our, our, the core of our teams in Buffalo. Um, we have a couple folks in uh, uh, in the West Coast uh, over in LA. Um, Scott spends part of his time in, in LA. We have um, uh, our customer happiness manager and a few other sales folks are in LA. Um, we have a team that we just stood up uh, in Australia earlier this year. Um, we had so that consists of a full product team, uh, product and engineering team, and uh, a, a head of sales and business development, and a general manager down there. Uh, we also have uh, a development team in the Philippines uh, mm-hmm. that can kind of help us to be on the twenty four seven development cycle, supporting both Australia and the US. Oh, very cool. So, I mean, you're 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 used to distributed a uh, distributed work environment, not necessarily remote, which will bring us to the next topic, which is everyone went remote. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Didn't matter where your office was back in March. Um, yep. You're a growing company. Did that cause any challenges for either you or for your customers? Yes. Yes, I think specifically for for us, uh, it was uh, how do we. Uh, I, I think we developed a, a very close, tight-knit team, and um, and we hired now six people since COVID, um, which is a good problem. I mean, it, it's a good problem to have because we're because we're growing and 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 we're expanding our team, but um, a lot of the folks haven't met each other quite yet. Yeah. So um, it, it, I say some of the challenges was helping them to navigate the organization um, because you're not all in the same office space and, and you're not able to kind of beat everyone in that, in that same way. Um, you're not hearing those side conversations that are going on maybe in sales and marketing. So um, again, what that kind of forced us to do was think of the systems that we had to put in place so that we're one, working cross-functionally a little bit better towards shared objectives mm-hmm. um, and, and, and understanding that you know what's going on in sales, or, or the discover the needs that we're discovering uh, in the sales demos. And those conversations are feeding their way back to the product team, and the product team is keeping the sales team informed on you know the roadmap and the status of what's going on. So um, that was kind of some of the challenge. The other thing that's been, a, been interesting to really think about is uh, how do we operationalize Australia, and then also uh, collaborate with them given the time zone difference. Right. So that's something that we really had to think up, think about early on. We actually had someone who 
uh, someone who, who experienced a lot of anxiety for the type of hours that they were working. Um, and, uh, it, it, you know, we responded to that fairly quickly by, uh, you know, innovating around uh, or adjusting um, our operational approach to make sure that the hours lined up a little bit better. So yeah. it, it's, been, it's been a bit of a challenge. I think. Yeah, interesting you, you bring that up because I've actually had staff in Australia when I, but in my San Francisco career, not my Buffalo career. Um, and there's, there was an actual overlap because it's an 18 hour difference. There's an actual overlap at 4 p.m. for where I think it's 8 a.m. their time, 4 p.m. our time. Both parties are in the office. Right. Yep. I think that was what it was. It was the opposite. It might have been 8 a.m. us, 4 p.m. them. But um, it's been a while. Yep. Um, but in Buffalo, it's a 15 hour difference. So there really is no overlap. Right. So was it handled out of yeah. LA or Buffalo? It's out of both. So what we found is um, I, I literally went over to a whiteboard and mapped out the different times, the three different time zones that we're working on. Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay, here are the common hours that the, uh, the, the cross market time that we'll have for all of us to be able to collaborate. Um, and then um, we set, you know, Australia on its own kind of normal nine to five, but we do have shared hours that we were able to identify. Some of them are really interesting. So like um, in my afternoon, for instance, or I spend a lot of my Monday evenings on, on calls with, with the Australia team, um, that's actually their Tuesday morning. So it, it's really interesting. Like we just refer to days as days now and <laughs> instead of like good afternoon, good evening, good morning. So yeah. it's, it's pretty interesting, but we had to get creative. Yeah, I remember the first time I flew there. I left on a Saturday night, got in on Monday morning, and the NFL was on <laughs> when I got into my <laughs> and I don't, it wasn't the Bills, it was another NFL team. So <laughs> but I still watched sure. it. It was like being <laughs> so uh, to finish with there's companies like Gaper that help develop, build, and and scale products, especially for startups. It sounds like you're doing that out of some of that out of the Philippines, right? So how, how important do you think that is for companies like yourself that, that need to hire, you know, uh, less expensive developers and they need, they need specific skills? Uh, very important uh, from the perspective of sometimes, um, you know, uh, for us, for instance, like, uh, you know, we have a, a run or we have a, a runway, right? Uh, we have a cash runway um, and we have timelines that we have to hit and we don't have the luxury of maybe huge budget budgets. Mm -hmm. So um, it's really important for us to be really efficient with uh, with our spend. So having uh, a more efficient uh, engineering spend allows us to be able to do more, um, you know, invest in more projects, if that makes sense, yeah. um, with more people, rather than if you were to pay like maybe, you know, the cost of two engineers uh, that are a little bit more on the high end of, from a cost perspective, kind of limits our our organizational capacity per se so really what it does is open up our organizational capacity to be able to you know work through the backlog of of promises that we have to our customers yeah no i i agree and, and i mean and, and i know there's a lot of good talent in buffalo too a lot of very you know i mean ub right that's where i got my degree from so yep and you were and, and and to be clear for, for us we have a hybrid so we had a development team in uh in buffalo uh, which which are mostly folks who are uh, born and bred Buffalonians, which is, which is always nice to bring the tech space here and uh, and give some of the talent the ability to stay in Buffalo rather than having to migrate out west or, or to New York City. Um, we also have a tech team in, uh, in uh, Australia as well. So um, the Philippines allows us to expand a lot of what we, we, we do from a project perspective as well. Right. And, and I understand, and I think you do too. I don't, not everybody understands it is when you, when you do that type of outsourcing, um, it actually helps your company grow and you actually end up hiring more people locally. Yes. Eventually, right. Correct. Because we started with the team uh, in the Philippines that enabled us to get to the place that we're in today. Yeah. Well, David, um, it's been great talking to you. I, sounds like a great company. Um, I love your city. Um, I, I want to thank you for your time today and, Go Bills. Beat those Patriots. Go, <laughs> Go Bills. Thanks, Mark. It was a pleasure. All right. Have a good day. You too.